we can be so speedy so quick we are speed um fun story that i think i've told you but i don't think i've told the listeners is that um when i welcome to romance your tbr season two we're getting right into the banter um uh i'm your host caroline and i'm hannah and right before this call we were like we can just knock this out really quickly and now i'm already right off the back and tell a story instead um is that when i was in elementary school like fourth grade or something uh gifted and talented of course i was in it have you ever met me i'm a burnt out gifted and talented kid if ever there was one those memes are always so fun (laughs) they're always a little too accurate is what they are yep um i was in a gifted and talented class and there was one day that i i don't remember anything that we did in that class except for this one specific day because the teacher like changed us like changed i think normally we got to chose choose where we sit or like we had a different arrangement but she swapped up the seating arrangement swapped up those are words that go together (laughs) swapped out changed up the seating arrangement it's 11 p.m she moved the seats around and i ended up sitting as at a a table of three boys Mm -hmm. uh Two of them were very good friends who loved to make fun of me. To this day, I'm convinced that at least one of them had a crush on me, and that was why, because there was no other reason for them to be, like, really yeah, taking time out to be – like, I know it's unhealthy to be, like, if they're being mean to you, it's because they like you. But in this case, I really genuinely do think that's what was going on. They teamed up to buy my desk and then tax it. You it told me thing. about that. <laughs> yeah, they were little yeah. assholes. <laughs> We had to, like, pay rent on our desks, and we got paid a paycheck for doing chores, but if you bought somebody else's desk, you could charge them whatever rent you wanted, and so they teamed up to buy mine and then set my rent at my income so I could never save money, and then one of them traded the desk to my friend for a mini Oreo, so, like, these aren't the smartest guys ever. However, I'm sitting at a table in, like, the fourth grade with these two guys who are kind of bullying me and this other one who's, like, a friend of theirs that I didn't care for. And the lesson for the day is on, like, I don't know, physics or something. You know what you teach fourth graders. And Mm -hmm. on the whiteboard, there are these lists of, like, velocity, speed, whatever. Like, equations. And we're learning the definitions. Like, what is velocity? What is speed? Whatever. And the one kid looks – I know their names. Ryan looks at the (laughs) board, and he's like, I'm speed. And Sam looks at the board and is like, I'm velocity. And Joseph looks at the board and he, I don't remember what the third one was, but it was something along those lines, you know, I'm whatever the third thing is, something related to speed and velocity. And then he looked me in the eyes and went, and Caroline is weight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> slender, my lord. Which, like, also, I wasn't really, like, a particularly chubby kid. I was, like, mm-hmm. a normal, like, you know, kids are chubby. hmm So it wasn't even, like, it hit like home because it was burn. accurate. <laughs> it was more just kind of, like, hello? Like, I was just sitting here minding my business, and then you looked me in the eyes and said, and Caroline is weight. And, like, fuck you for your fat phobia. <laughs> However, we were in the fourth grade. Why was this relevant? I don't know. <laughs> it had something to do with how we opened. Oh, because we were like, we can be speedy. I'm okay. speed. <laughs> I love the parallels. Um, I have a really random story with n- absolutely no correlation to anything that we've sure. talked about. But I've been wanting well, to say When it. do we ever need accurate <laughs> segues? <laughs> but I've been wanting to say it for a while because it's just very sure. jarring. Um, so, oh, it's, it's also seasonally relevant because my mom's birthday is tomorrow, the day we're filming this. And two years ago to the day tomorrow, she wanted strawberry shortcake. So I went and I got, you know, all the ingredients and I was like, I'll be a perfect daughter and I'll cut these strawberries. So I'm cutting these strawberries and then I cut one and on the knife, there's like this little seed and I'm like holding it up to my face. I'm like why is that that looks like pincers and i looked down there was a live bug that i had just cut the ass off burrowed into the strawberry like i sliced its ass off live and in person i screamed everyone thought it's saturday night (laughs) it was like i screamed so loud 
The dog is going crazy. My sister is like, what is going on? Everyone thought I like cut my arm off. And sure. I like My I brother speak- did slice his thumb off once. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the tip of it. Just the tip. Honestly, I have so much trauma from this event. I should have ra- like I would have rather sliced the tip, just the tip off because literally I like I couldn't speak coherently. My dad had to kill this, but I was like pointing and they had no clue what I was talking about. Finally, I could get out. There's a live bug in this strawberry. I went and threw up and I haven't been able to cut a strawberry since. Like, I can't do it. I refuse. Or like a raspberry. Like, I have to look into each raspberry because it was live. It was alive. Like, can you, like, it was like squirming around because I just chopped its ass off. It was real. It was a real bad day. (laughs) That sounds horrific. However, the only thing I can think of in this moment is that joke about what's worse than biting into an apple and seeing a worm. Oh, no. I don't know this one. How do you not know this? The only thing worse than biting into an apple and seeing a worm is biting into an apple and seeing half a worm. Ah! (laughs) But that's so true, though. Like, I could never trust a chocolate dip strawberry again. Because you know what? You just bite into that bitch. You just bite into it. You don't know. Like, I could have eaten this bug in half. Chomp, chomp. Like, just straight in half. Munch, munch. Munch, Straight in half. Ass off. (laughs) Ass off on a Thursday afternoon. Like, I just, I can't like describe the terror like it's truly like i can't really cut fruit i mean can you imagine the terror of if you were just minding your business living in your little house that is also (laughs) your food and all of a sudden half your body gets sliced (laughs) off well he was he was going through it too i mean he was like trying to get out of there it was i like maybe we melded on like a spiritual level and that's my cryptid (laughs) um that i meant to be with (laughs) Not the Mothman, but the strawberry, yeah, like, bug strawberry man. Strawberry bug. <laughs> like, I just, it changed me as a person. Yeah, I, I don't doubt it. <laughs> and, That's yeah. horrendous. Yeah, so um, we bought cake, so no strawberries are involved. <laughs> and <laughs> we bought cake tomorrow, and I'm going to eat it. It's going to be delicious because it's from Nothing Bunt Cakes, which are so... <sighs> I know. I love those. I know. They're so good. And no we bugs those, were slaughtered. No bugs. In the, in the making of that cake. We had those for my last birthday. My like brother and his family were visiting mm-hmm. and it was a whole they always they're like, What kind of cake do you want? And I'm always like, I don't know. Yeah. That's so stressful. And suddenly mm. the clouds parted and the oh. angels thing. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I want nothing bunt cakes. Mm-hmm. particularly because if you do the little mini ones everybody can like yep. choose a couple flavors yep. it's delicious they're so um, good and they have gluten free too my, my dad they and do. sister mm. yeah my brother is gluten free mm-hmm. so we needed an Did option that. for him as well um, but <laughs> bunt bunt our family motto we joke is if it's good enough to do it's good enough to overdo Uh-oh. Um, and my dad is particularly a perpetrator of this so what happened was he was like, okay, we're each going to get two of the little mini bunt cakes. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's the list of flavors. What flavors would you like? And I was like, oh, how can I choose? Why choose? Why choose? It was a why choose romance between two But then two I bunts. did choose. But then he came back and they had number one, a, a full-size cake that was like mm-hmm. red velvet and it was like all decorated and it was like the birthday cake. And then also everybody got two of the, the you know – personal mm-hmm. size ones and then also he had gotten they have like little mini ones yeah like yeah the, like really small ones and he had gotten two of every flavor of those oh and those God. were just how many for people me. are in your house just for you no those were for me because i had said how am i supposed to choose i want all the flavors and my dad it's good enough to do it's good enough to overdo was like then i will get you every flavor <laughs> i respect it so much however i think so i had to like start giving them away because those yeah. things are rich you can't just yeah. pound through nothing bunt cakes <laughs> can't pound the bunt <laughs> they last it for days <laughs> <sighs> caroline's not metal enough to pound the bunt <laughs> slamming down bunts left and right um wow that's a lot wow it was a lot i had to oh eat a God. lot of bunt cakes in the coming days jeez i ate you- so much bunt <laughs> <laughs> oh i love a theme so much um, cake, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ten uh, minutes in, and we wanted minutes. this to be 
short. That's fine. That's fine. Honestly, that's the most interesting part of this episode because we don't have <laughs> much to talk about. Um, it's yeah, true. Yeah. I, one second. Um, I am always and forever going to get the confetti cake because I am a birthday cake whore. I mean, I don't agree with you, but I do respect it. Thank you. Like, funfetti is my flavor. I love sprinkles and, like, anything fun funfetti. So, that's who I am at my core. But this also, like, the strawberry. Ooh, this is, this me. is me. Exactly. The strawberry is good. Mm. I'm a big fan of lemon. I, we Not- just had lemon. We got my – my mom loves lemon and coconut, so do I. So, like, we got a lemon one to share yesterday because we brought my grandparents some um, for her birthday yesterday and then – Lemon is, like, never really my favorite flavor, Mm. except in cake. I love lemon cake. It's not my favorite, but, like, I just really like it. My my mom loves, like, lemon and orange, so, like, I grew up Mm. loving lemon and orange. So, like, Starburst, my favorite are lemon and orange, which are always the forgotten about flavors. Like, my favorite color is pink, but I prefer orange or lemon over strawberry Mm. any day of the week. Um, And so, like... Anything lemon orange, all the the scents too. They just smell so good, so citrusy, mm-hmm. so clean. Like all my hand soap. Um, their lemon cake is really good. Olive Garden yeah, used is. to have a really good lemon cake, and then they got rid of it. Just sucks because it was so light and fluffy. Oh, I love mm. dessert, and I love eating bunt. I made a limoncello, uh, ricotta cake, mm. and I think Mm-mm. that was one of the best things I ever made. That sounds delicious. It's real good. Let them eat cake and bunt. <laughs> munch, munch. That's a direct quote, by the way. Um, <laughs> I think history books have gotten it wrong. Um, I was well, there. No big deal. <laughs> you were there. All right, yeah. look there. <laughs> yeah. Um. So as we said, welcome to Romance Your TBR Season 2. Yeah. Starting off strong with just so, <laughs> so many tangents. Yeah. Um, this is know. hopefully going to be a short one. If we get past 30 seconds, I'm hitting stop. I don't – or 30 minutes. 30, like, I don't, 30 I don't, seconds. <laughs> I don't care where we are. If we're in the middle of, like, the most dramatic thing we've ever talked about, if we're talking about the horniest book we've ever read, after 30 minutes, it's stopping. <laughs> so – that's. So true. So um, it won't be longer than 30 minutes. Part of this is because this was supposed to be a TBR Tuesday. I mean, it is. Um, But we only got a couple of things to recommend. We've included most of our recommendations in the last newsletter that went Mm -hmm. out. So we both both had like pretty slow reading months while we were on break. And like I've reread a lot. And like you already know my feelings on a lot of those books. Um, And I just read some ones that were like three stars or less that Mm -hmm. just kind of disappointing all around so i am some that we're gonna do full episodes on so yeah so uh (laughs) we're just gonna run through the recommendations pretty quickly um Mm -hmm. and then get into just a quick overview of our plan for the rest of the season which i'm excited about um which you also if you read the newsletter that went out you already kind of have an idea that is one perk of the newsletter you should be subscribed to. Early information. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> points. <laughs> Love us. Um, yeah, and we're also, we. I don't know if we talked about it here or if we just noted it in the newsletter that went out after our break started, but we're doing like a newsletter exclusive podcast. It's only going to mm-hmm. be like once a month. We haven't even recorded the first episode yet because no. time is chaos. wacky and chaos. Um, but like we may be getting, dare we say, tipsy for some things, um, and definitely tipsy TBRs. <laughs> I like uh, this is gonna sound real bad, but I need a reason to drink. That's relatable. <laughs> like, I just don't drink a lot, Alanis but Morrison. I do love margaritas. These are the reasons I drink. <laughs> it's just our podcast. It's that's it. TBR Tuesday. No, what is it? It's five o'clock. It's TBR o'clock somewhere. That was a bad one. Thank you. It's romance. (laughs) It's a romance. Your TBR o'clock somewhere. You don't believe it or not. We are sober. It's just 11 p.m. Super R. Um, But yeah, so state like you can subscribe um, to the newsletter to get like updates on that. You can also like you can listen in the um, Substack Substack. app. You can also like 
take it to Apple Podcasts via like the secret URL for the RSS feed. Um, so you can be like a little spy. Um, and there are like a few other places you can listen to it, like outside of that, but you get the link from the the newsletter. So yeah, yeah that's going to be fun. Um, it's called Romance or TBR After Hours. Because <laughs> we're cool. <laughs> Don't. You made it sound really cool. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nothing about me is cool. That's really so. Cool. There's that fun tidbit. But I did chop an right. ass off a bug once, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Ruthless. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Not traumatizing for you or the bug. <laughs> I'm so sad. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. Um. Books. Wow. We've books. Like big books, and I cannot lie because I'm Lathair, a <laughs> natural born vampire who can't lie. I thought you were gonna say a natural born killer. <laughs> I'm a natural born the lover, skin baby. Of a killer. <laughs> the skin of a killer, Bella. Ooh, the skin um, of a lover, Caroline. Ew. <laughs> yeah, we're on our best stuff tonight. Um. <laughs> That's just the facts of life. Okay, the only books I really have to recommend um, that are not already like included in the newsletter mm-hmm. slash we're going to talk about them are The In on Sweetbriar Lane by Jeannie Chin. Standard Ooh. disclaimer, I work for forever. No. Um, what? I don't know. People might not know. <laughs> um, it is the first in three books. At least three mm, nice. that are out. I don't know if it's completed or not. I should know that. I I think that it is. I think it's just the three Wu sisters. Um, it's a small town romance. She runs it, and in just a small he comes to girl. he comes back from Afghanistan, and his best friend that died there was from their town, and he always talked about wanting to build a bar there. So he mm. shows up, and he's building a bar, and it's right across the street from her. They get up on the wrong nice. foot, but then they just get off. <laughs> Took the sweet briar lane going anywhere. <laughs> um. <clears throat> um. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. That's all. That's it. That's all she it's wrote. Just a, it's just a little small town romance. That's cute. Sometimes those are just like perfect fun time to, for the mood. You know. Um, mm-hmm nice um the one though well, the two that i read you've recommended in the past um mm-hmm. but i did indeed read something wild and wonderful by anita kelly and i completely understand why there has never been one bad thing said about this book it was so good i mean mm-hmm. you couldn't pay me like any amount of money to hike that trail <laughs> like no. horrible fears no. bugs and strawberries like bugs and cacti like there's just a lot of bugs probably everywhere and heights i hate heights i'm so happy they found hotels i respect mm-hmm. them so much for that um but the book itself was so good like it was so soft mm-hmm. and like you said like they were going like through specific like traumas and stuff but just the way it was written it was just so caring and oh it was really good i would totally reread it again like real soon it was like one of the only new five star reads of the, um, that I had like read in April. So I started the month off strong and then kind of like read some other ones. But that one was amazing, and the audiobook was really good. Um, yeah, the narrator was it just one narrator or was it two? I think it was just the I one. I think it was right? just the one. He was really good. I think it was just one. Yeah, he was great. Highly recommend um, going on like a nice little nature walk while yeah. listening to it. That's what I did, and it was I that would really be lovely. Exciting. Yeah, I think I was just like sitting on my floor going through my American Eagle purchases, so maybe not the correct <laughs> vibes. <laughs> um, but yeah. Slightly different vibes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really loved it. Um, and I have nothing much more to say besides you should read it too. Oh, lovely. So yeah. That's me. Um, speaking that of, least. it was quite lovely, even though they're going through it. Um mm-hmm. my only other contemporary well i guess i should throw out two actually were how to fail at flirting by denise williams oh, I love um it. and also astrid parker doesn't fail by mm-hmm. Ashley mm-hmm. i love that Blake. one too yeah um i think i just i read it at the it was one of those that like i read it 
but it wasn't what I was in the mood for. Oh, yeah. But, like, I think if I had read it at a different time, I would have. I still really enjoyed it. I definitely that's, recommend it. That's how I feel, felt about Delilah Green. Uh, yeah. Um, I didn't vibe with that one as much as I did Astra Parker. I just, like, the Astra Parker one for me was, like, so, like, cinematic or something. Like, there's a movie that was on Netflix, Revenge of the Bridesmaids. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. It's like Raven Simone um, and Cheyenne from Reba. Um, and there's a song. It's like, these are the days we remember. And like, it was ter- terrible, terrible version for me. My terrible singing song sounds. But it sounds like that, honestly, though, in the song. It's like a very like specific song. And like they had like this like montage scene in the book where they were like, like at their all the friends were together like having a sleepover or something and I just couldn't stop thinking about that song and <laughs> I really like that book was really fun um and it, it did did have you read Delilah Green yeah yeah so I liked seeing um Astrid in that book so like while that one wasn't my favorite I enjoyed seeing her from that one to the second one so I would read in order um if people are curious yeah. but I, I can I can see about that being like a right book wrong time moment um yeah i was just feeling very historical but my mm -hmm. old had come in so i was like oh yeah read this but yeah it was contemporary but it it, so it's one that like i think if i reread it in future when i'm in the mood Mm -hmm. this is a difference in like one star i think i rated it four (laughs) yeah and then you're like one that like i could see it being five Mm -hmm. if i were in a different mood um how to fail a flirting was just five um That was a great um, book. That one's heavy yeah. content warning wise, um, mm-hmm. with like domestic abuse, uh, yeah, and such. I, it was just a great book. I don't really have anything else to say. I will read just about anything Denise Williams writes. Yeah, I love her book. It was such a good debut, um, and it was like just the main characters and. I um, have since reread it. Like, I read it um, when I was first on Bookstagram um, because it was, like, coming out at that time. And then I listened to the audiobook fairly recently, like, last year sometime, I think. Um, And it was even better than I remembered. Mm. And, yeah, you're right. Like, Denise Williams, like, her writing is just so good. Even if I don't, like, vibe necessarily with the plot of some of the ones I've read, like, her writing is still great. Mm -hmm. Um, That's my favorite of the ones I've read by her so far but yeah that's a great choice nice my only other one is the secret lives of country country gentlemen um mm-hmm. by kj charles which again you have recommended for good reasons um okay that was so good it was mm-hmm. so cute um you had mentioned that the the narrator was a little wonky and i do agree um the voices were a choice and like I the like stilted most of the voice it like it was Gareth an, and yeah. What, what's the other one? Joss. I didn't mind their yeah. voices, and I liked Joss's accent because he has a like a specific. It's not the like kind of posh accent. It's mm-hmm. what northern or yeah. whatever it is. It's a yeah, the marsh. Um, the marsh. so like I appreciated being able to hear it to hear the distinction in their accents. Uh huh. But it, the delivery got me. The, the like it, the, the stilted. It w- and like you said, like it's hard to describe, but it really was still to like after every word, it's like it was like pieced together, but he yeah. was just talking. It felt like um, jar, like abrupt, jarring. I don't know what the yeah. I stilted is the best way I can describe it. Yeah, I, it was odd, but like it wasn't bad. Like the narration, it was just like it took a little mm-hmm. bit to get used to. Um, yeah, I got used to it pretty quickly, mm-hmm. and then it was. But, like, you said, like, the marsh, them just, like, mm. vibing with that set. Like, the setting was so, like, such a main character. Um, mm. And, like, the I wrote down in my review, like, the chapters 23 and 24 were so stressful. I won't spoil it, but, like, I was so stressed. Like, you knew how it was going to, like, turn out. Obviously, it's a romance. But I was like, oh, my fucking God. Um, but then um, – this is a mild spoiler skip ahead to the timestamp if you do not care to hear it um but there was like a point where um joss i believe was gonna be like i thought he was gonna be like no don't shoot him whoever the kidnapper was um he was like no please shoot him (laughs) i was like thank you just shoot him 
shoot him so hard. Um, and he did. Shoot him. <laughs> and that was a glorious moment for me. Um, because I just expected him to be like, no, don't shoot him. You have to be good. No. Violence was chosen. And I appreciated it. Um, but yeah, it was a really good mystery. Mm-hmm. And um, the romance was cute. And because uh, they had like had like their breakup kind of at the beginning. So then it was just like mm-hmm. a natural, like very, like they talked about their problems yeah. like throughout the book, um, which I really enjoyed. And it also reminded me of the um, other KJ Charles, the Kindle Unlimited or the Audible original. Mm-hmm. Um, wasn't the thief that... in the night? Yeah, because they that one also started out with like just fucking like right at the beginning. <laughs> and, like I respect a theme, um, and that's another good one that we've talked about before. Mm-hmm. But they kind of felt like sibling novels to me, um, yeah. which was fun to get like a full version of it. So, True. oh god, okay, we're at twenty six minutes. <laughs> It'll be fine. We can go a little bit yeah. over. Speaking yeah, well, of they chose I... violence. You're not cutting me off. Speaking of they chose <laughs> violence, um, I my only other ones. I have been on a Laura Kinsale. Oh kick, yes, you have. Yeah, I can cut Laura Kinsale. So I, I actually read them out of order. Um, I so the, the whole medieval world. hearts duology is for my lady's heart is the first one, and then Shadow Heart. However, I read Shadow Heart first, um, because I was told that it it's all the heroine's POV and the hero is very mysterious until suddenly oh, the middle yeah. of a sex scene where she is like being very dominant. It's real. King. He's like tied to a wall. Nice. Being very submissive. And then suddenly we switched to his POV and I was like, sign me up. And that is in fact, what a thing to read. Um, <laughs> what a thing to read. I love does Shadow the, Does the Debbie Ryan like, yeah. <laughs> Um, so these two, it, it, I, I would say you could read them out of order. For me, it was one of those, like, it happens much later. And so he's a character that like you meet Mm. in the first book and spend some time with. And now it's like 15 years later or something around 10 to 15 years later. Um, so had I read the first one, like you get more of his backstory and kind of know why he is the way he is. I actually kind of liked reading this one first though, and then going back. Mm Mm-hmm. And being like, like oh, this is what he was dealing with. This is why we ended up where we are. Um, So I think you could really do it either way. Mm -hmm. The first one is more of a, like, upstanding knight hero who's filled with lust. But, like, really doing his best to to be honorable and noble and take care of his liege lady. The second one, he's an assassin who takes her ship prisoner and marries her against her will so that he can try to take over the italian principality that he used to be a part of that he's been exiled from so As it depends on does. your vibe it depends on your vibe <laughs> my vibe um, is retaking <laughs> in principalities that I was once a part of. sure um i would say mine is more the like upstanding liege lady sworn uh pretending protecting yeah. knight because that man is so fine um <laughs> There is something so deeply sexy to me about the, like, I I guess, like, the courtly love, but Mm -hmm. also the, like, I have sworn to you, like, I will obey your every order, like, my lady, protect you with my Mm life. It's so hot. He Mm -hmm. is just, everything about his life is dedicated to taking care of his lady. (sighs) Anyway. I I had a whole... Oh, I was gonna say I had a whole course on courtly love in um, mm. college, and it was lovely. It was the, one of the best courses I ever had. It was so fascinating, yeah. and it was like how courtly love like still influences how we view like love in today's mm. society, and it was so good. So do some research if you're intrigued. Yeah. Well, the things about these ones that you should know—they're both like n- almost 500 pages. I want to say, um, <laughs> and they are—they are—they're very long. They're like medieval adventure romances, so there's a lot of yeah. traveling and intrigue and political maneuvering and all of that kind of stuff. Shadowheart is sexier than For My Lady's Heart. Mm-hmm. It's also real kinky, so there's kinky. that. Um, but they're also both written, not so much the narration, but the dialogue is in Middle English, mm-hmm. which I didn't have too much trouble with, but it did slow me down a little bit. Although, yeah. with both of these ebooks, there's actually two books in each ebook because Laura Kinsale 
edited a newer edition that like condensed it and made it for a uh, made it a tighter read and cut down a lot oh. and also updated the dialogue so it's not in middle english or at least made it easier oh. to read so if you're like oof the thought of reading 500 pages of middle english dialogue and crazy long adventure plots sounds horrible and you like give it a try and it doesn't work for you you can look at the updated version and those are shorter and more updated so that's an option I- i'm having a great time i haven't finished for my lady's heart yet i've got a few more chapters mm-hmm. but um truly just the best time i it's, it's there's so much drama mm-hmm Allegretto, the spy, is like, he, he doesn't have a name for the first many chapters. He's just the raven. He's just a guy in a cloak who lives on a an island and has kidnapped I her. Too. I'm a guy in a cloak who lives <laughs> on an island. And he's like, maybe a wizard, maybe summoning maybe demons. Wizard. Who's to say? <laughs> it's so good. Maybe Both a of wizard. those books, truly phenomenal. Um, So I will be continuing my Laura Kinsale kick because these are scratching an itch. That I didn't even that know you didn't, I had. That you didn't know you, you, you had. No. That's lovely. Speaking of scratching an itch that I, until recently, didn't know I had. It's sure. a bad, bad metaphor. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, So I've talked, obviously, about Kiss of a Demon King and how I love that book. Um, And we've read Prisoner of My Desire for a later episode. But... um. <laughs> I picked up Dara Joy's Mind to Take because this man is just straight up chained on the cover naked. And I was like, well, that seems like a fascinating thesis. Um, And she's got she's got the keys like taunting him with them. So I was like, well, this seems like right up my alley. Um, So once again, we have a man kidnapped um, to have sex with the heroine. And there's more of like a like they communicate like she's like if you do this we can do this and there's more communication in this one than prisoner of desire and it's not like um that like i need to take your seed unto me um (laughs) that's gonna be quite an episode when we (laughs) need to bring forth my seed um which is both kiss of a demon king and prisoner of my desire um but he is also a cat shifter he's just a just a cat so like a big big jungle cat sure. um i'm only on what chapter five that big big man shifted into a house cat a hedgehog um <laughs> yeah i mean they're I, like their entire like shifter powers are like sexual skills um so sure. like that had me from the summary <laughs> You yeah. had me at sexually gifted. Um, I was hoping you would be sexually yeah, gifted. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, um, basically, she's escaped her evil relative because there's always an evil relative trying to take over a kingdom. And sure. she's now on the run with this um, massive purring cat man with sure. green eyes. And Meow. they're going to have some real good sex in a little bit. So I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm <laughs> I'll let you know how you. it goes. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. With that out of the way, um, just a quick season two preview. Ooh. What we've got in store. Um, again, if you've read the newsletter, you kind of already know. But um, sharpen your pencils, <laughs> grab your backpacks. We're going to old school school. <laughs> I love that. Um. Also, I miss All I can hear in my mind, by the way, is grab your backpack. Let's go. Jump in. Is that Dora? I don't know. I think I just blended the magic school bus and Dora <laughs> somehow into one song. Um, and I was, let's go. I don't know how I did that. <laughs> but in, I like I did a mashup in my head of those two theme songs. What's the ma- I don't even remember the magic school house theme Get song. Get on the magic school bus. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of uh-huh. wow. television aimed for elementary schoolers going through my brain right now. But this is not for elementary schoolers. Old school school is not for the faint of heart. Not for the faint of heart if the ones we've read so far are an <laughs> indicator. I sure was surprised every page turned. You know, so. it's going to be a time. Um, We have worked out our syllabus if you will our reading list um 
the plan is to do similar to our Hathaway's read along um, every other episode. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we will be interspersing other books we want to talk about, trope roundups, yeah interviews that kind of thing um those will be like kind of tba as we go Mm -hmm. and we've got some Um, cool like collabs with other creators and stuff and yes so excited um but hopefully soon we will have posted the i want to say 16 i think it's well 16 i think it's 16 total was it oh well that's counting it might be 15 Uh... because the one is a series Oh, yeah. You're right. You know, I have no idea how many. It's 15 to 16. So we will have posted the the final list of old school romances with the days that we're going to be posting those for anyone who wants to read along with us. Um, but it's yeah. going to, I think it's going to be really fun. I am Friday. Super... I'm very excited for that yeah. episode. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be great. Um, we had our first mm. non-author guest. <laughs> and it's like two hours long. And I truly don't know where I can cut info. So like there's a little bit we can to. cut. There's like a little bit that we wanted to cut, like be discussed. But most of it is staying in there. It's Romance or TBR uncut. Um, so Listen, it's us <laughs> plus our lovely friend Sand of TikTok and Instagram. Fame. Why would you want to like edit out anything she's ever said? So like – no, literally. You can't um, fault us. You can find her at Baskin Sons. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about Lord of Scoundrels, oh. uh, among other things. But, like, the main topic is Lord of Scoundrels. So how could you possibly ask us to edit that Burying down? Burying the lead. We mm. did it. So yeah. that is our first. That's, we're kicking off with old school school. So much. Like, we just mentioned Lesson it a little one, bit. <laughs> Lord of Scoundrels. In the newsletter. But we've mentioned so many different things. Like, cryptids come back up. Um, dinosaurs come back up. We Hedgehog romances. You know, hedgehog, like, shifters, to be clear. Not just You, you want hedgehogs. this episode, so. You do. We will um, give it to and you because we're so kind and I mean, generous. lesson one, we're kicking right off. Lesson one, shoot the man in the arm that you want to marry. True. Shoot the man that you want to marry in the arm because I don't want to marry the arm. <laughs> That's true. I don't want. This is when don't. syntax matters. <laughs> Yeah. Practice safe syntax. Shoot the man in the arm that you want to marry. Mm -hmm. Um, Don't shoot the messenger, but shoot the man in the arm that you want to marry. And that's our first lesson. That just about rounds it up. I think Yeah. we're only eight minutes over what we wanted. That's fine. That's fine. Um, But yeah, we wanted to like do a lot of like we asked for Rex um, Mm -hmm. from like a lot of like foundational like historical romance novels for people um yes. so most of them are from that list and they're like ones that may not be the best books but they sure were uh they were the notable word? notable yes that's the perfect they word. they're so. well-known foundational old school mm-hmm. historical romances mm-hmm. yeah we're not going for the, the good the best Nece- necessarily <laughs> yeah yeah. Am I afraid of the flame and the flower? Maybe. Uh huh. But have... what could possibly be worse or better than Prisoner of My Desire? What well, a I can say that we. Yeah, that's a great question. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can say yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. Like I told you, like you know, there's always a fear that I'll just like forget books that I've read. I will never forget that book. That's so bad. Like. I will not – like, there's no way I could just be like, oh, yeah, next day, don't remember it. No. Mm. No, we, we, we've we got that in our souls. It's locked and loaded. Uh-huh. For better or for worse. Until death do us part. Mm-hmm. And then it'll probably still haunt us. Probably. Probably. Yeah. So, so. that's what you have to look forward to. Chaos. Just, just us being chaotic. Just for your entertainment. <laughs> for your Just, entertainment. Are, are you bun- not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> Me delivering a two-hour episode to the four listeners that we have. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Same. I've got well, 
nothing left in this brain of mine. Nope. We did it. No. Welcome back to season two. It's honestly going to be a long season. We're going all the way through December because we don't know how to do <laughs> math or decide how to divide up seasons. And season one was confusing. And we've made season two even more confusing. So I don't know why we It's did our that. own fault. Next yeah. year we'll be doing just halves. But we're just, it's fine. Yeah. We're really I good don't... at the podcasting thing, I think. You know, good at subjective. <laughs> also, seasons are arbitrary. They are. Except they that are. we divide it up based on themes. So nothing matters. Everything is chaos. Time is meaningless. Mm-hmm. And on that note. Yeah. Uh, that was a shitty note. I didn't expect you to make my bad joke. I know, and I made it worse. <laughs> I don't know, like, well, Flemmy, I don't know what happened there, but it was not a great note to end on. Oops. I think it was the best note to end on, personally. Why, thank you. I have sung too much in this episode. You have sung a lot in this episode. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I mean, if I can sing Journey, I'll always sing Journey, so it's one thing about me that you need to know. <laughs> Noted. Yeah, Faithfully is my car ballad song. Like, mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> okay. Well, just two small town podcasters living in a virtual world. <laughs> And goodbye. <laughs>